side to a very lovely, uh, what I call this R&B music from one of the young artists who will get for inside our sofa, inside our studio this morning. We have Demi Grace in the building. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, ma. Abio. <laughs> a good morning to you, ma. Let's talk about your musical journey because we know, say, in the industry, the Nigerian music industry, we get just few ladies and um, artists and where they actually push through. I don't know why it's like that. Tell us about your musical journey and how easy or hard it don't be for you to actually break through in the music industry here in Nigeria. Uh, my, my journey's been interesting. I mean, I started in church, like, like many, many singers. Um, and then I started writing poetry in school. And poetry turned into songwriting. Um, and then songwriting turned into recording after I graduated. Um, I think it can be difficult for women because the business is very messy. And uh, it has been male-dominated for a long time. So sometimes it can, see, it, it can feel a bit uncomfortable for a woman to go at it aggressively. Um, knowing that she's, she may be judged or she may be pushed in a direction she doesn't want to go. She may be around some things that make her uncomfortable. Um, I think that's, that's, that's probably what makes it difficult. Let's for break it down because you're in the industry so that we can understand it better. Pushed and made to do something she does not want to do. How, in what ways? Um, a lot of the times in the music industry there's a kind of cookie cutter image that they want every woman to have. They tend to want every woman to have a standard of beauty, a standard look, a standard weight, a standard, you know, everything. Um, they really try to put women in, in a box and some women are not comfortable with that box that they want to push at the time. So that's what I mean by push. And they'll tell you, oh, you have to do this look to be successful. Have you experienced that? Of course. Of course, I've had people that say, hey, you have to cut your dreads, you have to get longer hair, you have to get shorter hair, you have to, you know, you have to show this, you have to cover that. A lot of, you know, there's a lot of direction um, that they want to give women. Whereas you see, there's a plethora of men. They look all types of heights and sizes and shapes and weight. And there's some men in the industry that are not as, not as cute, some men that are very handsome. You know, they're allowed that freedom, but women, they want one you know, they want one style. If you're dark skinned, they want you to look like one dark skinned girl. If you're, oh, don't forget, say, um, the toxic impression really matters, and impression makes um, your appearance makes a, a lot of impression. So, right. you know, if you say the reason that they tell you that one because of the kind of impression we, we, you need to give the audience or your fans outside there right. at, the, at any point in time where you do. Of course, I'm sure that they're, they're working off of what has worked in the past. And they just want you to be successful at the end of the day. I'm sure a lot of, a lot of the people that are giving direction to the artists on how to you know, compose themselves, how to, how to make their image, I'm sure they're doing it because they've seen it work in the past. Um, so you know, I, I, don't, I don't think that it's all negative and it's all because they just want to control you. But it, it should be said that you know, there is a box sometimes when it comes to women in the music industry. All right, so let's talk about, are you under a label? I'm not, I'm independent right now. You're independent right yes. now. Is it because, I, I don't say, I don't speak with a lot of producers, and they come outside talk, say it is easy to manage a male artist than manage a female artist. Why would they say that? Did you ask why would they say that? Well, they give us an example. They say, like, now, let's say um, a female artist, now she needs to go perform somewhere. You're going to need to get her a makeup artist, get her, like, a stylist, person mm -hmm. who dress her, fix her hair, give her better shoe. Mm -hmm. Say, but for the man, just tell her, say, oh, guy, you the perform, oh, yeah. You go just wear a jean, wear a top, no need for makeup <laughs> and anything. I, I mean, I think that even with the, the male artists I've seen, some of them require just as much work. So that's why I'm like, I'm surprised because, you know, some of the male artists I've seen, they have their stylists, they have the male grooming now. I don't know if you, you know, you've been hearing about male grooming, you know, being increasingly popular. Um, you know, the, some of them are starting to get, you know, their nails, you know, make sure the nails are clean and everything, you know, because now they want to get into fashion. Because you see Kid with Naomi Campbell, all the men are going to want to get into fashion now because it's become, you know, it's becoming popular. So I think it goes both ways, really. It's just more about awareness. Because for me, you know, I like makeup. I like to do my own makeup. I like fashion as well. I like to do my own styling. I like to write music. 
I can do my own songwriter. Yes. So it just depends on who you're working with, really. So now let's talk about your career because we know you've done the industry for seven years and um, we know you know they're easy for anybody to say cons consistent right. for inside, especially for the entertainment industry, knowing the kind of competition we did there. So what do they keep you going? What do be your own source of inspiration? Music is a purpose for me. I think that that's overall that's what keeps me going is the message um, the message that I'm conveying in my music um, and just the image that I'm putting out there, it feels more like a purpose. Which image do they put out there? What kind of image are you putting? I think the image that I'm putting out there, based on my life experience, is you know, you don't have to just look one way to be successful, you know, to have a standard of beauty. I mean, look at us, we're, we're, all, we're dark skinned women. But when I was growing up, you know, they were saying that, you know, you're too dark, you're too this, your lips are too big, you know, because I, you know, I grew up in the States. Um, and I just really wanted to kind of prove that theory wrong. And by doing that, I have to keep going for my dreams every single day because my, you know, being a singer, you're, you're in front of the camera, you're in front of the spotlight. You have to be, you're going to be seen, you know, so in terms of image, that, and also I just want to spread positive energy through my music. I want to make people dance, I want to make people come to shows together, all different nationalities, races, you know, um, uh, black or if you're black American or if you're a Nigerian, if you're, you know, from Ghana, it doesn't matter. I want everybody to come together okay. and just come and enjoy the music. Now, there's a saying that the success of an artist, they for their label. Now, seeing that you're not signed under any label, mm -hmm. does it affect the promotion of your music? Because you've been in the industry for seven good years. Yes. Um, it, it, it's funny, it doesn't feel like seven years. That's why when I was telling you, I was like, seven years? <laughs> it doesn't feel like seven years. It does affect promotion because, you know, in my mind, a label is working as an investor and they're putting what they have saved up to invest specifically in into artists and mm -hmm. to you. Now, when you're using your own, uh, your, your own budget, your own everything, you obviously have to pay for other things in your personal life, whereas a label, their sole responsibility is your career career. So I think it can affect it, um, but at the end of the day you work with what you have. So personally is it affecting you? And why are you not still signed under a label? I don't think that it's affected me as much as people expected it to affect me. Um, I think that, again, you know, the idea that you use what God has given you, you use what you have and, you know, until you get, you know, until he blesses you with more. Um, why I'm not signed with a label, um, I think let me, let, me, let me clarify. So I've had distribution deals okay. um, in the States, but they've been non-exclusive and they've been through independent labels. Okay. Um, I'm not opposed to signing with, you know, signing with a major label. I'm not opposed to it at all. Um, where I am presently in this moment, I'm using what I have to prove that I've, you know, to, you know, you do a little bit of proving yourself when, you know, when you're in the music industry, especially as a female artist. That's what totally understand. Now tell us about this year music, why you decide to sing the song titled Afraid, yeah? Yeah. So why, why, why you tag I'm Afraid? What's the music all about? The music, the, the songwriting for Afraid came out of um, a relationship situation. Mm. You know, it wasn't, it was, I know. <laughs> I There's only a story to read. Uh -huh. mm, romance, I hear. Uh, yes, um, it, it was a relationship that needed to end. Um, and I found the strength to end it by writing the song Afraid. Um, yeah. That's... So like you ended the relationship in the, in the song and he saw it and he was... No, I ended the relationship. I wrote the song. Mm -hmm. Then I recorded the song. Mm -hmm. And then I ended the relationship on a personal level. I don't even think this person knows that this song is about them. Mm -hmm. um, so you talk to your music, uh, there's a message. So what message is in Afraid? Don't be afraid of what's on the other side. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. Wow, wow. So really tell us, being a young lady and, and doing this independently, how, how challenging in terms of the financial aspect, how you don't do it for you? I, I know so that you defund them or you get people, sponsors, where they back your career at this point in time. How has it been? I mean, I've, I've definitely had a lot of help from my family. Um, you know, we do what we can. I think that there are good days and there are, you know, not so good days. There are ups and downs. Um, but it hasn't been as stressful as it may seem, you know. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, any last words to give to your fans or people with you out there? Some people are looking up to you, to the fact that you never went to the industry and you just stay consistent for seven years. What do you feel to tell them at this point in time? 
Especially, oh. just to, sorry, just to add to that, especially with the, um, with the desire for upbeat kind of music. Right. But you are being consistent with your kind of music. So what advice would you give to people who want to actually, people who decide, say, come, I want to stick to it, I, I, which I right. do, and stick to it despite distractions? I think as a creative, especially if you're an up-and-coming creative artist, stick to what you feel it, what comes naturally, what art comes naturally to you, and an audience will be created out of that. You just have to give it some time. And also believe completely in what you're doing, and other people around you will start to believe. At first they'll say you're crazy, and then they'll be copying you at the end of the day. Are we going to see you do any upbeat kind of music? Oh, yes. You should actually hear my new single. Hey. Maybe I'll play it for you when the show's done. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. So right. Thank you so much, Damon Grace. Thank you. Come inside the studio this morning. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.